Welcome back to the ShapeDiver tutorials. Today we'll finish looking at the outputs of the ShapeDiver plugin and in particular the advanced export features. And in that case, instead of working on simple boxes, I'd like to look at a concrete example of an object that end users can configure online and where the definition will create and export manufacturing data on the fly. So I put together this very simple parametric bench model with a few parameters, a number of planks, a global width, and even an angle to play with. And I only use standard components, except for uh, the very last one, which is a ShapeDiver display geometry component uh, that will display the actual object. But of course, now what we need is to extract the relevant um, geometry and data uh, so that we can manufacture the object. So in our case, the steps are going to be the following. We're going to extract the profile curves of all the individual wooden pieces here. We're going to unroll them. Then we're going to nest them on wooden sheets and then use the export components of the ShapeDiver plugin to actually export them to a DXF file. And we'll um, uh, attach some properties to the exported geometry so that we can export different curves on different uh, layers of the document and also use different colors. So we look at all these properties. So the first step is to extract those profile curves. And we'll keep it simple and say that the, the way this bench works is that the ribs have slots in them and the planks just like come and fit in the ribs but without any cuts on, on the planks. So I was a bit lazy when I modeled this and you know I, I modeled just like the plain, um, plain parts. So now I need to extract the, the curves with slots in them, the, the rib curves. And there are several ways to go about and do that. The first um, uh, naive way to do it would be to do a solid difference here. So look at the rib and subtract the planks from it. And if I do that, I will end up with, um, with a plank with the slots and then I can uh, extract an edge from, from this B-Rep and I'll have my profile curve. But as you saw, the, the Boolean difference is never a good idea if we are looking for performance. It took seven seconds in this case. So there's a more efficient way to do this. So what I'll do instead in this case is to uh, work directly on the construction curve of uh, the rib and I'll do uh, a region difference on the curve. So the idea is that I want to remove from the rib the, the sections of the planks that are in the plane uh, of the rib. So here I need to intersect, so uh, be right, plane intersection, yeah. I'm gonna intersect the planks with the, um, that's a, uh, XZ plane and here I have my intersections and I can remove that from the region defined by the by the rib and here we have a much faster way to to get the profile curve so now I'll just finish by unrolling it on the XY plane in this case I can just rotate it, uh, that's a YZ, around the YZ plane. And here it is in the XY plane and I can duplicate it because we have two, uh, two ribs. Here, two, and that's it. We have our two unrolled rib curves in the XY plane. I'll just hide all of this. And now the second step is to get the the profile for the planks and in that case it's easier I'll just use the construction construction lines of each plank and I have yeah the plank width here so I can just create a rectangle using well the lengths curve lengths of those in white in one direction and the width in the other direction 
So the width is the same for all planks. Flattening here. And here I have uh, all the rectangles um, that I need. So that's the unrolled profile curves for the planks. So now I have all of my unrolled curves and I can proceed to nest them. So for nesting, Shadaver supports the Open Nest plugin. It's a simple one component plugin uh, that does the complete nesting. So the two mandatory inputs are the curves we want to nest. So in our case, the ribs and the planks. And here you'll see that I modeled in a unit uh, square. So basically everything is contained in a one, uh, one to one square. So if I want to define the sheet where to nest, um, I can pick a scale that makes sense. And define rectangular sheets. So one over two, for example, and use this sheet for nesting. So here I have my sheet and my geometry. And I need also to define uh, a spacing that makes sense. So I'm in a one to one square. So let's say 0 0.1 distance between the curves. And now I have nesting. So 0 0.1 is actually pretty wide. If I do 0 0.01, uh, wait, that's placement. Spacing 0 0.01. All right, so here I can even nest all my curves in one sheet, but let's say if I have smaller sheet than this, 0 0.6, 1.4, 1 1.5, here I'm using two sheets. So as an as output of this component, I get uh, the geometry, nested geometry, and the number of sheets that are used for nesting, and also the transformations uh, that all of the curves have uh, followed to, to fit in the nested uh, sheet. So now the last step is to export those nested curves to a DXF file. And for the sake of the example, let's say I want to export the rectangle sheet on one layer, and then all the nested curves on, the, on another layer, but with different colors for the ribs and for the planks. So here I have my output curves and what I need is to split them again according to the, the ribs and the planks. So I have two ribs. Okay, so now I have um, two different lists, one for the ribs and one for the planks and the last category of curves I want to export is the sheet. Okay, so now I have everything. <clears throat> so in order to export and uh, set properties, attach properties to all those curves, I'm going to use the properties export and set properties components of the Shadow plugin. So the properties export is uh, the component where you can build a properties object and then you can use the set properties component to attach those properties to the to the geometry. So here for example the sheet I'm going to attach uh, a properties object that just defines uh, a layer name so for example sheets. All right I'm not going to give names to the curves or colors or anything in this case. And in the case of the two other types of curves. I have um, my planks. So here I'm just going to use the same name. So it's nested curves, for example. That's the name of the layer. But I'm also going to define two different uh, sets of properties. One for the ribs which is going to define a color. So uh, let's use a swatch, but for example, the ribs are going to be red.
and the planks blue here sorry I'm a bit messy but okay now I still I have the same set of, uh, of curves but now they have the attached properties and they're ready to be exported with the, with the right properties to the file. So finally, we'll use well, the component we presented in the previous tutorial. So we can export all of these curves in a file, uh, so in the DXF file. So here, it's a DXF. And we can give a generic name to this file, for the example example export and we're ready to upload this file well pretty much I'm just gonna make sure everything is hidden except the preview of the object and let's upload this file so as expected here we get our bench I assigned a, a wood material to it and the parameters we defined in the model and the export uh, button. So I'm gonna uh, proceed with the exports just to show that we end up with a DXF file with the correct, um, correct data we attached to it. So here, if I open it in Rhino, I find my sheet and my curves and if I look at the object properties, I do have um, the, the sheets on one layer, the curves on another layer, and with two different colors assigned to them. So here, one trick we can use to uh, optimize this process a bit is to decouple the, the whole nesting operation from the rest of the logic of the definition. So here the issue is that um, the nesting happens all the time. So if I change any parameter, the nesting will recompute. In this case, it's not um, too long because there's not that many curves, but it can easily start taking uh, minutes uh, to, to happen. So the idea here is to add a toggle, for example, that will filter um, some of the inputs of the nesting so that it only happens if we want it to happen. So here, for example, if I don't do the region difference, um, the rest of the definition will, will not uh, be executed. So now I can play with my parameters much faster, which is true both in Grasshopper and most importantly online, once the model is online, and only decide to activate the nesting when I do need to process it and export the file. And the last topic I wanted to discuss today is another component from the outputs category called export email. So this component is useful if you don't want users online to be able to directly download the exported files, but you would rather that it triggers an email that you get and then can process the file. And so the email that will be sent will contain the, uh, the exported file as an attachment and uh, other information that you can define in this component. So it works very similarly than the normal export download component. So you can input the geometry that needs to be exported, uh, define a file Format, file name, example two. And on top of those uh, parameters, you can also define the contents of the email. So first, obviously, the which email address should be sent to send the email. So in this case, I will send myself an email. If you did not know my email address, now you do. And then I can define the subject and the body of the email. So. Here, a file has been exported. That's going to be the subject of the email. 
And then I can even write text for the body of the email. And here we have one last neat trick that we can use, which is that uh, I can write any text I want, but I can also pull the parameters that were chosen by the user when he exported the file. So it's it's a nice way to check against the exported file uh, which parameters were used. So the file has been exported with the following parameters. And in order to list the, the values of each parameter that were used, I use this macro, params, and that's going to uh, uh, send the email with the right information. So now my email is uh, completely defined. I can upload this file on Shapediver. And we can see the uploaded file with our additional changes. First of all, the process nesting toggle, which means that if I change parameters in the model here, the nesting is not processed and it can happen a bit faster. But if I want to export, I'm going to activate uh, the parameter. And then here we have our new email export button, which is going to also request the export from our servers and then uh, notify us when the email has been sent. So now I can just go check my email. And I do see the email with the contents I defined in Grasshopper and the list of parameters that were used for the export, as well as obviously the, the link to download the, the exported DXF file. That's it for today. Thank you for listening once again. Um, if you like those videos and you want to see more, you can like the video and share it uh, on social media. And next time we're going to discuss some image processing tools. Thanks again. Bye.